Hi everyone, back here again for another video. Are you interested on the Logitech K480 and you want to know if it's a good keyboard to use in your daily work or in school? I will share with you today how my K480 is holding up after two years and I hope this will help you know more about this keyboard if you're thinking of buying this. First, I would like to show is how the K480 is physically holding up after two years. Let's see how does it look like now. Are the keys still intact? Are the keys turning yellow? And as we see here, overall, it still looks okay. And the letters on the keys are all still here. I've never dropped this and so far I've used this with care, so no damage on my keyboard. As for the keys, if it's turning yellowish in color, well, the keys texture is different from the body. Though it's both white, the body has this shiny finish while the keys are kinda matte finish. So that's mainly why the colors are different. But looking at it, not from a camera's point of view, it's not that noticeable. Here, it kinda looks like this because of the lighting on my desk and my simple iPhone camera setup. So, but what do you think? For me, it looks okay, even after two years. As for the battery life, according to Logitech, the batteries can last up to 24 months, which is similar to the K380 keyboard. And same as what I said in my K380 videos, I turn off the keyboard when I'm done using it because first, it preserves and extends the battery life. And second, um, why do I need to keep it on anyway? <laughs> well, let's say I don't turn it off because I forgot and this happens to me sometimes. The K480 doesn't seem to go to sleep mode, I guess, as my iPad or even my Windows laptop instantly wakes up when I press a key on the K480. Although I tested this with my iPad and my Windows laptop going to sleep, for just a few minutes or an hour maybe, as again, I turn off my keyboard when I'm done working. Anyway, Logitech claims this has power saving technology that preserves the battery life. There's no battery indicator on the iPad as we see here, but I downloaded the Logitech Options app and the batteries are holding up well as the battery icon here shows it is full. And to be honest, this is mainly because I don't use the K480 every day and not as often as my K380. And that's a hint to my next category, which is the typing feel and the clicks of the keys. So first, let me give you some sound tests so you can hear how the typing is and how loud it is to type on the K480. As we just heard, easily you will know this is really plastic. And since the keys are bigger and have higher key travel, it can be really, really loud. And for me, this can probably be the keyboard that may introduce you to a mechanical keyboard. And in fact, if I did not have my Blitzwolf keyboard, it may pass to be a semi-mechanical keyboard. <laughs> but after having some time to use my Blitzwolf mechanical keyboard, the K480 just started to feel really clunky and cheap, unfortunately. If you're interested to see my comparison between the K480 and my Blitzwolf mechanical keyboard, stay tuned because that will be coming soon. Anyway, all the keys are still working okay, and I haven't had any issues that the keys are not working or responding when I press on it. Now let's talk about the K480's different functionalities. It is not possible to customize any of the keys, even if I connect this to the Logitech Options app. 
what I can only do is to switch the function keys to work as standard function keys and all these other notification options, and that's it. Unlike the K3AT keyboard, that some function keys can be customized. What is also the same with the K380 is that I can connect the K480 keyboard to three devices. This is a big feature in my opinion and it's very easy to do by just switching this dial here. Then to connect to the devices, press and hold these keys on the right. And what's cool is that I can easily connect this to whatever operating system I am using. So with these buttons, I can make this work on my iOS or Mac devices or with my Windows laptop. The function keys come in very handy too. And these function keys work on both my, again, my iPad and my Windows laptop. It even works on my iPhone. For those asking about this lock key here on the iPad, if I press this key, it will lock the iPad. And if I press this key together with the function key, it will take a screenshot. Of course, I have to talk about the built-in dock, which adds a nice touch and additional functionality on the K480. After two years, it is solidly intact. It can hold my iPhone and my iPad at the same time. But of course, I have to put my iPad in portrait mode and for those asking and i've received a lot of questions if the ipad 12.9 inch will fit the dock well i don't have the ipad 12.9 i only have here the 11 inch so i can only guess that it can fit based on the measurements from logitech and apple and according to logitech it fits most phones and tablets up to 0.4 inches or 10.5 millimeters thick and 10 inches or 258 millimeters wide. While Apple says the iPad Pro 12.9 measures at 0.25 inch thick, 11.4 inches in height and 8.46 inches in width. So yeah, that's it. You measure and decide. Now let me show you some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts and I will only show what's working on the iPad. If you've been here on my channel, you know I love my iPad and I use only this for all my personal work and my YouTube channel. So here are the shortcuts I love when typing. Command plus arrow left or right is to go to the beginning or end of a line. Option plus delete is to delete a whole word. shortcuts I will use here the caps lock key which works like the globe key if you want to know the details about why I use the caps lock key and more in-depth explanation of the multitasking shortcuts I made a dedicated video on this check the link in the description box so here are just a few of my favorites to do a split screen I do caps lock plus control and then either arrow left or right 
Then I can choose the app I want to open as the other half. Caps lock plus option plus either left or right arrow key is to put an app as slide over screen. To move the slide over screen is to do caps lock option and then either left or right arrow key. Then to hide the slide over screen, do caps lock and the backslash. To show it again, do the same command, caps lock and backslash. Last is caps lock plus F, which is to make an app back in full screen. Again, check out my other video for the full details of the iPad multitasking keyboard shortcuts. So to finish off, let's quickly talk about the price to see if this is still worth it at this time. In Logitech's website, the white keyboard costs $49.99, but the black is on sale at the very nice price of $29.99 US dollars. In Amazon, you will find the white keyboard a bit cheaper at around $35 US dollars. So choosing the K480 will really come down on your own preference. Personally, I prefer the quiet typing and lower key travel and the smaller keyboard. So I use my K380 way more often than this K480 keyboard. I may recommend the K480 even if it's now a very old model as it still works well with many devices and operating systems. The battery life is great and it can be a good introduction to the mechanical keyboard world. But note though that this is not a high-end keyboard so it is very clunky and feels quite cheap with the plastic build. But hey, you get what you pay for I guess. So hope this video helps and that's it. Thanks for watching.